Hey, Mike with Mike's Bags. Today I am reviewing the iron by Goaded Bag Company. Let's go ahead and dive in. We'll break these bags down. We'll start with materials. The slow side of the iron. This is that same material that Reynolds uses on the fast side of the Pro Advantage. It's the fast side of the BG Viking. It's the slow side of the Ultra Viper. It's the same material, but they flip it over. They use the back side of this. So it's 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 a little bit more of a controllable side of the material. It plays about a six, six and a half. Uh, I, I, once you break it, newer, it's gonna play six and a half, seven. As you throw it, break it and soften it up, it slows down. To me, it plays about a six on my on my speed rating and my speed scale that I have for myself. It's a very controllable, it, it's somewhat, it's fast but controllable. We'll put it that way, it's not very controllable, but it's fast but controllable. It's very hole friendly for the control you have with it. For me, this is, this is kind of that speed where if I want to run bags in and go hole for hole for my throw type, this is the material I want to go with. This is what I consider a faster material for my throw. If you have more of a finesse throw, a higher arcing, softer landing throw, you can still control this down. So like I said, it does have some control to it. The, the Probably the only downside to this is humidity. When boards start getting moisture on them from humidity, this material soaks that up and really starts to stick up and slow down. And so it's, it can slow down to like a four speed, even, even, even slower than that to a three or so if it gets really, really damp. So you can play it as the moisture and humidity starts to show up, but as it gets more and more on the board, it's gonna it's gonna start sticking up. You're gonna switch to different bags. So six speed on the slow side, fast side. This is that Pro Sniper Viper Deadhead fast side nine speed. It's fast. It's great for pushing, collecting, you know, cleaning up messes on the boards. It does play pretty well in humidity. It plays fairly well in all uh, board conditions or weather conditions. So you know, you, if you do get in a situation where board start gets sticky, you know, maybe you start a game out, they're moving really well, and then humidity kicks in, starts to stick up. You can always flip it over. And the fast side will run up the board, no problem for you. So we're looking at about a six, nine speed on these irons. The template on these, this is a this is a medium template bag, but it start it's on the it's on the larger side of medium, right? It, it's 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 getting to it's almost a large template, but not quite there. When I measure it, it's it's still right about that six inches, so it's not quite large, but it it has a larger feel to it. Now, when I first got these bags before they were new, before they were broke in, I was a little worried because the bags didn't feel that loose so they didn't feel like they had much flop they feel like a fuller bag and typically when i when i get a bag like this where i want to run bags and all i typically want a little more flop to the bag but as these bags have broken the materials have stretched out really nicely and now the bag does have some some looseness to it not a lot it's still a fuller feeling bag right it's, it's, it's a medium template it's got a medium amount of fill here, so you do have some flop. This is not overly floppy at all, but for me, it's just enough to give the bag the forgiveness that I want in a bag like this. So I'm okay with, with the fullness here and being not a super floppy bag. So if you don't like a floppy bag, then you might want to check out these irons. I think they might be what you're looking for. The fill in here is a mixed fill. It's a good mixture of beads, some flat fill mixed in as well. I really like, I don't know the ratio that, that, that Goat is using here, but I really like the fill they use because, because with, the, with the flat fill, it gives that bag that forgiveness of landing because you've got just enough flop here, just enough flat fill. You don't have to have the flattest of bags. If you land your bag, you know, throw an angle whichever way, the bag's not really going to punish you with a harsh kick. It has a little bit of movement, a little bit of kick to it. Not anything that's that you can't control, you can adjust, but it's not that harsh kick you get with a bouncier all bead fill or a stickier slow side on that. But with the beads in the mix fill here, you get that forgiveness and that drippiness around the hole. Right? I, I I love beads around the hole because the beads just keep keep them fill moving. They don't really settle like flat. That flat fill wants to settle, just kind of set there. The beads don't settle. They want to get to a point where they they can find the bottom, and it causes the bags to kind of drip and cascade in more so. So I love a mixed fill. It's, it's my personal preference of fills most of the time in most bags because you get the forgiveness landing, but you get the whole finish around the hole. The other thing is the bag has just enough flop to it that again, if you're not super consistent are super accurate and you're throwing your bags you're missing a little left a little right this bag will grab the corner you know as long as you get the corner to grab the hole it'll grab it spin around and pull that bag right back in so the bags are, are definitely uh, forgiving around the hole as well and if you can get with the mixed fill they, they become very hole friendly and both these materials are extremely hole friendly so you get this bag up near the hole it's probably going to go in if it's hanging it's not going to take much to bring the bag in so love the whole friendliness of this bag these bags are also acl pro stand for 2024 so if you play in acl events you can definitely throw the iron let's go ahead and jump in and talk about playability on these and, and as i mentioned this is a bag for me and my throw style that if i'm looking to run bags in go hole for hole put my four bags in just outscore my opponent round around this is the iron is what I'm looking for. This is this is the perfect slow side speed for me. There's just enough control there that if I want to throw a blocker, I can put a blocker up there. If you have again more of a finesse throw, a higher arc and soft landing throw, you can throw more blockers. For me, I have to take a little off, change my throw, but I can definitely throw blockers up there. The bag is big enough, full enough, it makes a great blocker if you put it up there. It's not that sticky, so it's not hard to push through. But for a lot of opponents, a lot of players, 
a visual obstacle of a bag in front makes them think, makes them change, makes them try to do something. Maybe they're going to try to roll or cut or flop or try to throw an airmail or something and cause them to miss as opposed to just trying to push through. So it's a great visual obstacle. And if you do throw a blocker up there, it's easy to collect. Because they're not floppy, they don't accordion up. So you just clip in a corner and get it moving. So you can get a little aggressive and put that bag more your opponent's side. And then you can step out, kind of get, a, get around it, two bags, and then your fourth bag, flip it over fast side, just come right down the middle clip it and take it in. Now the bags do have some shot shape and ability because you have enough fullness here that you can cut the bags. They're, they're, they're not, they're not going to make those harsh cuts that you would get with a, a stickier material or a bouncier fill, but you can make some solid cut. I was able to cut the bag enough that if my opponent throws a blocker, I have some options to get around. You know, obviously you can push through, you can airmail over, but I can throw a cut and sneak around if I need to. If you, if you roll or flop bags, as long as you're above average to advance, you can definitely do it with this. If you're an average or below average in the, in that roll flop department, probably not the best bags for you, but they're, they're definitely rollable, floppable. So you, do have some shot shaping capabilities with these bags that's to me not what they're designed for they're designed to put your bags in outscore your opponent because like i said very hole friendly they're very forgiving it's just it's a wonderful bag if you're if you're looking to improve your ppr a bag like these irons here will will definitely do that if you play you know ghost cornhole deck arounds around holias wherever you're playing open boards and you're just trying to put a high you know the, the most amount of bags and holes you can the iron's a great bag for that just because of the forgiveness that it has and, it, and it's a it's a big confidence builder it, it, sometimes when i'm struggling if i'm just my game is off and i do have that from time to time where i'm just struggling having a hard time putting bags in the hole. A bag like this is a great bag to pull out and throw and just build your confidence up because every time you put a bag in the hole, you become more confident. And the more bags you put in the hole, the more confident you are that next bag is. And, and cornhole is just as much a mental sport. It's probably more a mental sport than a physical. It's not that hard to throw a one pound bag, you know, 27 to 30 feet down the other end of the board, but it's mental. It's about getting that repetitive process and just and just repeating it over and over again. And a lot of times we start struggling, we start getting in our heads, we start making changes and adjustments trying to find things and we end up causing more problems than good where a bag like this even though you're a little off it can make up for those mistakes it helps build that confidence up and makes you a better player so a lot of times when i'm struggling if i'm having a hard time i pull out a bag like this and throw it for you know a, a week or two weeks or three whatever i need to do to get my confidence up i go out and throw it for three or four hours so i feel good about myself it's also a good bag for like blind draws because it's even though it's a faster bag it's got control so if you get an opponent who likes to play a slower bag they can throw this as well so if you're a fast bag thrower but you, you know, you go to blind draws and you got opponents who, who throw carpet and maybe you're not a carpet back thrower. A bag like this is great to have in your arsenal because it may not be as fast as you would like, but it's a good compromise where you can step down with speeds and it's still a carpet thrower or a sticky back thrower could pull this out and still throw it and have some success with it. So it's definitely a great blind draw bag for, for your faster bag throwers. And if you're a faster bag thrower and you're looking for a bag that has a little more control, maybe you're wanting to throw some blockers, this iron's a great option as well to step down to. And so it leads me to availability and Goaded has a website, goadedbagco.com. I'll put a link down in the description for you guys to go on. When I went on there for this review, the bags were 80 bucks for a set and free shipping. So $80 shipped to use a phenomenal price for a set of bags. So especially for an ACL stamped bag. So if it sounds like a bag you're looking for, uh, maybe you like that Cat 3, that Reynolds Fracture, the 724 WD, but you don't like the floppiness of it. You want a fuller version of those bags. That's what this iron is. Definitely check them out. If you've thrown them, Love to hear your feedback. As always, what you like, what you don't like, drop it down in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing you guys' opinions on bags. I thank you so much for your support, and I thank you for watching.